My Cleveland family rarely comes down. My brothers come down once in a while. Um, my wife's originally from Europe. We met in college. So her parents still live there. Her dad's a pro basketball coach over there for the last, whatever, 30 years. Oh, where? Yeah, my, uh, in Estonia, which oh, is, wow, okay. yeah, right? So anybody, you always have to preface, Estonia is right next to Finland, yes. right, in the Baltics. Oh. That's right. And so uh, my wife played basketball at Louisville. That's where we met. We dated all through college, got married right after type situation. But her dad and her sister, her younger sister, was a tennis player at Kentucky. She came over and she played, yeah. So, uh, And her older sister is an opera singer. Yeah, so it kind of, you can range it all. None of my, and by the way, my three kids can't sing. Yeah, my three kids. Actually, I have so many followers. Yeah. Yeah, no, the rea yeah, no one in our family can sing uh, at all, at all. No, no. I'm actually asked not to try to sing. Uh, What's your go-to karaoke song? I would, see, I grew up in the 80s kid, right? So like Bon Jovi, like Living on a Prayer, like all the, give me some old Bruce Springsteen type stuff, but uh, I don't think anybody wants to see me in karaoke. Oh, look at you. See? See? Going back to your Cleveland roots, D-Led. I kind of want to see this now. No, no one wants to see this. Nobody does. Not even myself. He just passed, right, D-Led? Yeah. Chico retires next year, man. Unbelievable. I know. Been a bad year, so when? Man. The Cavs are playing well, though. Oh, that's right. That's Kevin Butler's a good pick. He makes up. How about that, right? What are they, 18 and 12 right now, the Cavaliers? Oh, don't do it, dude. <laughs> don't do it. Yeah, sure. I think what, you know, specifically talking about Frank and, and it goes to really, um, I think when you get in this league, I think each rookie, regardless if you're drafted or not drafted, has their own journey coming in, right? Um, and I think each guy finds their own way in terms of not just on the field, but like life outside of this building. And so, you know, there's obviously all these adjustments that come from being a college player and now being a professional player. And I think what Frank does is he's got great energy. And so when Frank comes to practice or to meetings, um, he's an energy guy that positive, goes out there, and he plays really, really uh, fast, and he never kind of tires. And so as a coach, right, you can put him on different things in scout team and stuff like that, and then you know he's going to give you full tilt effort. Um, so from that standpoint, you know, Frank has, has provided that. At the end of the day, in terms of the opportunities and stuff of that nature, right, that obviously comes down to a numbers game. Um, it doesn't mean one guy over the other. It means just ex exactly how we're looking at the plan this week. Um, Frank obviously is in a room with veteran guys. Frank's learning every day. And that's what we ask of all the guys. More importantly, I've told you guys before, what Frank does is he competes. And he brings out the best and the rest of the guys that are in front of him or he's competing with. And, and again, like we've seen throughout this whole year, right, guys have stepped up when an opportunity has presented itself, and we expect no different than from Frank or anybody else who gets an opportunity. Is this something where you, do you almost say to him at some point, like you said, this tournament is a numbers game? Look at the numbers and look at what this room is going to look like potentially in 2022, just with, just with the reality yeah, no. of, of guys being free agents, et cetera. Do you say, listen, you have to pay attention to these guys now because next year... No, I, I learned this link a long time ago. I mean, it's a day-to-day -day business. Forget a year-to-year -year business, right? Um, I think my family and a lot of coaches and players' families can attest to that. The reality is you want the guys to stay in the present. And so anything that's happened previous to your this day or what's going to happen in the future really is not relevant at this point. What he needs to do is come in just like all the guys, regardless if you're not starting or starting, and come in and be present in the moment and, and compete and execute. No different uh, if you're a rookie or you're a 14-year vet. Sure. Yeah, what I see from Kyle is 
to your point, the stuff that doesn't go on necessarily a stat sheet or what you see on TV uh, when you're watching a game or in the stands is a guy who comes in and is, tries to consume the game plan. Um, he asks good questions. You can ask him questions. He gives you good responses. I think sometimes as a coach, um, when you ask a question, at times you're a little nervous about the response you're going to get back, right? Because that's what they're hearing or at least what they think they know. And sometimes they're way far off and sometimes they're spot on or they ask a, a really good question in a rebuttal. And, you know, with Kyle and a lot of our, a lot of our players, um, they ask good questions. They absorb information. Um, you're able to ask them questions and get good information back. So that's a constant part of the mental part of it. I get the physical, right? You see them run routes, catch a ball, block people, all those other things that show up. I got gotcha. you. But a lot of the stuff that happens behind the scenes from a coaching standpoint is you want to see how players are able to consume, understand, and then more importantly, be able to explain it to you, um, either by action or by words. And I think Kyle's done that so far. Sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, that that yeah, it's a good question. And it's a tremendous challenge this week uh, with that defense that we're facing. Um, a ton of talent, a very good scheme. They play fast. Again, it comes back to what I said before the last three games. You guys have heard me. I still believe it's about fundamentals. Mm -hmm. I think it's about confidence in what your technique is and what your assignment is. Um, on, have a great understanding. But more importantly, when the ball snapped, don't do something that you have not practiced. Mm -hmm. So from a technique standpoint, don't go out of your body experience and try something that's completely new. The reality is rely on the techniques that you have hammered over and over um, since you've been here and since you've gone through the drills. And it's for all 11 on this field. It's just not the O-line. Um, I know a lot gets attributed to the O-line in terms of mm -hmm. performance and everything else, but the reality is the quarterback has to make sure we're in the right check. He has to do a great job of carrying out his fake. I know that sounds really trivial, but he is responsible typically for someone on the defense. And then you have the receivers and the backs making sure they're on the right tracks and have the right reads and the receivers are on the right people. So to get the run game going, especially this week, it's going to take all 11. Um, and it's going to take those guys being confident and convicted with great technique. Is Fred Warner, um, how is he playing for them next, next mm -hmm. little bit? Yeah, I mean... You can name him, which obviously is a great football player. You can go down uh, that roster. Um, you know, again, not playing them. The last time I had played San Francisco was 2018. So obviously there's been some difference in terms of what they've uh, done personnel-wise. The one thing that is steadfast since I've known Kyle since I was a player is that he's got a team that plays fast, physical, and, and, and hard. And it shows up on the defense. And so it's one of those things where uh, you appreciate when you see it on film and you players know – uh, on the offense in particular, that you're going to play a fast defense that's physical, and you better be able to bring it. Does Bosa elevate his game to game record status? Yeah, he's a good player. <laughs> I mean, like I said, there's a number of guys in the defense that stand out on film um, that your eyes go to when you watch the film. Uh, he's obviously one of them. Um, he's done a great job since he's uh, gotten this league, and and it's no different than what you see on film, but it's a lot of those players on defense. They've done a great job of getting the ball out, mm -hmm. right, from a turnover standpoint. And they might not always get it, but they're knocking the ball out, and they're playing fast, and they're always around the football. Uh, and again, from the other side looking at them, I have a ton of respect and appreciation for how they play. Yeah, I think to me at this level for each position or each player going out, doing what your coach should do, more importantly what you've practiced um, and playing fast usually breeds confidence. When you go out and you do something that's not what you've practiced and you try to get a great result from it, it's probably going to be inconsistent at best if not a failure. Um, and that's not going to breed confidence. To me, their ability for all of us, coaches and players included, to go out, understand the plan, digest it, go out and practice it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and be able to execute it on Sunday, 
I think, therefore, you start to see results, you start to understand the confidence, but it all comes back to the fundamentals, the foundation. If you believe in what you're doing and you don't waver off of it, regardless of a, a result by week, and you truly believe in what you're doing, I think at the end of a course of a season, you're going to see the results that you want to see um, year in, year out in this league, in my opinion. So hopefully it continues for all guys involved. No, it's a good question. I, I wouldn't term it that way. I would say, so, right, you can go all the way from your peewee player to the National Football League. Sometimes when you line up and you go across from somebody, you think you've got to do something that's extraordinary just because they might be bigger, faster, stronger, or whatever. And my whole thing or our whole approach, reality, is, is you stay within yourself. Like sometimes when you try to do something that's too much or um, you think you have to do extra, the reality is the times that it does work, compared to the time that doesn't, it usually doesn't balance itself out. So my whole, our whole thing in the reality is, is to go out there, stay within yourself, believe in the fundamentals, execute the play at hand, make sure that you have uh, conviction and you come off the ball. That's all positions. So. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, and then last one for me. Uh, was talking to Quadra yesterday, and I know Arthur has kind of said that he's, he used the term like he earned his carries, he's earned his reps. What have y'all kind of seen from him, not just in the last couple of weeks, sure. but I mean, yeah, professional. A uh, guy comes in, understands his responsibilities of what he's asked to do, even though he might not get the reps early on for that. Um, a guy you can rely on in terms of understanding the assignments and going out there and executing uh, when he gets a chance in practice. And obviously, he's had uh, some chances in games in which he's shown the ability to, to run the, the ball and, and be physical and be productive. Uh, again, some guys get a lot of opportunities in this league. Some guys don't. The reality is what you do with them. And obviously, he's just one of many guys who have had opportunities and, and try to do something with it. And the more you see of it, obviously, the, the more opportunities you'll get. Uh, he's just a, he's done a good job of being prepared. Anybody else? We good? D, we good? Yeah, we're All right. Good.